excited to get back to Lotus Notes and stuff. You suck. Um, thanks for coming. Um, I'm going to talk about why triathlon, my training logs. This is like everything leading up to this day, and I'm sure you all this stuff on the agenda will be helpful, from, even if you never do triathlon. So, first of all, I beat Ernesto by like five hours. That's why I finished time, eight hours, 16 minutes, Ernesto did it in 13 hours, 37 minutes. So, everyone's been wondering who won. Ernesto, I, I had to wait for him for a while, but there, there's proof. See? 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 So, just so then you guys know, we're wondering who, who won the race. Uh, so, uh, just a little bit of background, though. Um, a lot of people are like wondering like, why I did this. this. Ernesto's actually the guy who got me started with this. With this, um, And so, I did, um, I was weighed, I weighed about 170. Now, when I weighed myself this morning, I was about 151-ish. And this was my first, like, big triathlon. Was, um, uh, this was about two years ago. So, I started, I could barely swim across the pool. I would run half a mile on treadmill, and I would need to stop, and so it was bad. Um, here is, since then, I've done 39 races, and... What's that, yeah, time, what's that time up there on the left? Um, on the left. <laughs> 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 that must be a mistake. 13. So, um, <laughs> so, yeah, there's been... I've, I've had a lot of races since. Um, so, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about my training. I got to put in around 34 to 30 to 50 hours a month to do this. On average, you should do about 15 hours a week. So I was under schedule. Part of it's getting to work at this place. Part of it's just being busy. Um, so I didn't get to put in nearly as much as what I was supposed to do, but I still crossed the finish line, and I'm very thankful for that. So doing a full Ironman is pretty crazy. I don't really recommend it because of the volume of training, but I think doing shorter events is a good idea. Um, this was my four-week taper plan because I got pretty scared about making sure I stuck to my schedule. And I actually came pretty close to sticking with this schedule. The green are swim, the blue is bike, and or the blue is run, and the green is bike. And so I try to do this. I did this on post-it so I can move stuff around when stuff gets busy. And I actually did pretty well during my last three weeks. It's a lot of last-minute training. And I had probably the most, the most amount of training compared to um, this Strava group I joined. Strava is like a way to like track your progress among like a bunch of other people. So there's like 80 people who have it. And so I could see how am I doing compared to everyone else with their speed and all that. And I was coming in around third to fifth place um, in total volume the last three weeks. So the last three weeks, if I would have done that for the last four months, I would have done a lot better. But that's okay. It's better to do last minute training than, than not much training. So, um, so this is kind of a chart of what, how it works. Where you pretty much don't take a rest day unless you really need to. Um, with training, you usually do two things a day, sometimes one. Um, and then if, you're, if you really need it, you take a whole day off. Um, so here's the number one thing I learned in my training that I did wrong. Um, I got really excited about running. Part of it's because Ed kept bugging me to go run with him. Part of it's because oh. I, I just I did, I had a half marathon and I wanted to beat my friend really badly. So in, in that struggle group, I was the, I came in first place in October. I ran about, yeah, I ran 199 kilometers in October, which was, yeah, first place out of all the people in that group, which is great if you're training for a marathon. Problem is, you're biking most of the time, so while that was good, um, it kind of screwed me over because it's not all about running. If you look at my bike numbers, I was in 20 out of 20. I was in 20th place out of 22. I was towards the bottom of all these people, so I was definitely doing something wrong. And I didn't realize this till maybe a few weeks before the race, where I'm like, hmm, I don't know why this is so difficult when I go biking. It's just because I wasn't putting in enough bike time, and it just makes sense. You need to bike a lot in a, a 200 full mile um, race. So that was a big thing. If you want to do this next year. Don't just do all this running miles, because even though the running is at the end, what you learn about in triathlons is it's really about having a really strong bike, so when you get off the bike, you can run and be okay. But you did pick up a lot of running time on Yeah, I did. We'll talk about that detail later. <laughs> so, I'm going to go over my plan. I think Jennifer or do. Uh, I could, uh, she did pretty well. She was always in first place. I think she had like a 520 bike split. I had a seven hour bike split. So. Anyway, so I swam 2.4 miles a couple times in Corona Del Mar, and I said, oh, look, I covered the distance in an hour 26. Piece of cake. I wasn't even killing myself. 
if I could do this in hour 26, why not do an hour 30 for my race? It's going to be crowded, but I'm going to be in race mode. I'm going to be excited. Uh, hour 30 seemed very reasonable for a goal for this race. Um, my biking. Um, so biking can get a lot more technical. Um, I was, in the beginning, wanted to do a five-hour bike split. Then I said, no, nah, it's kind of fast. Then I said, maybe a six-hour. And then because of my discovery on not biking enough, I said, let's do a 630. Um, the thing with biking, um, which is really cool, is if you actually use a power meter to track your biking, you can really get scientific on how hard you should bike throughout the race. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Um, this is in Strava. It gives you an estimated power curve given all your races. And my estimated functional threshold power what well, came out to 204 in Strava. Um, that means is FTP, or functional threshold power, is pretty much the maximum power you can maintain through an hour's effort without fatiguing. So I can measure that on my bike on how hard I'm going. That's better than using a heart rate monitor or speed because speed changes with wind resistance and all this stuff. Power is actually what your body's doing um, for the biking. Um, so this is really nice because I have a power meter and so I could pretty much know, given my numbers, how hard should I bike. Um, so, um, given all these numbers, um, I even looked at my last race that I did a couple, um, about a month ago, and I looked at my power numbers and it said I was doing about 200 watts for 33 minutes. So. Um, if you do the math, um, you could get an idea of how long I should spend on the bike. And so what you, what, I, what you can do is you take your power and how long you're biking and you get what's called a training stress score, which is pretty much how hard are you going on the bike. And you could look at date and then you could um, also take what's called your intensity factor. Um, I can send you this all later if I'm going fast. but. Your intensity factor takes your functional threshold power, which is like how strong are you on the bike, and how hard are you going, which is a, a ratio of that, and you can see how hard you should go. So for my Riverside truck, so for comparison, my Riverside triathlon, I went at around 1.1 of an intensity factor. So that's over 100%, and it's, that's because it's a 12-hour bike ride. For the Ironman, they want you to go around 65, 70%, which makes sense. It's a longer distance. So, just a comparison. These are two like really fast people. This is an age grouper, Chris Thomas, and he had a. This is for another race. And Pete Jacobs, he's a he's a professional, and but it's okay. Um, so, if you look at what what you can do is, regardless of who what you're doing. For an Ironman bike split, an optimal bike split, you want to do around a 280 training stress score. Um, that takes into account your FTP. And so uh, this guy will, they both had about the same training stress score, but one did it in 435, this guy did it in 504, and it's because the guy who did it faster has a higher FTP. So pretty much I could take my FTP, shoot for around a 280 to 270 training stress score, and it'll tell me, if I plug in all the numbers, um, I can get an idea of how long it's going to take me to go on the bike. And if I just focus on this, I should have a good run split. Versus just winging and going, oh, I'm going to go for a six hours bike split. The headwinds are crazy. I still hit my six hours, and then I start running, and I'm, I'm hosed because my legs are burned out. So this is another chart that if you study, given your intensity factor and your time, how much of a, what your training stress score should be. So this, depending on the farther you go this way, the more intense your workout, your race is going to be, the faster you'll go, um, but then you have to be a stronger runner to keep up with it. So again, on average, most professionals who win the race, they have an, about an 80% um, intensity factor. So of course, they're strong in both areas. So they can push harder on the bike. I did around a 65% for the race because I wanted to take it conservative. What's really cool too is I can take all my numbers, input it this input it into this website called bestbikesplit.com, and given my FTP and what or what training stress score I was shooting for, which was a 270, it'll tell me my projected time, given even the um, elevation, my my bike characteristics, how arrow it is. You put in all this information, your weight, blah blah blah, and it gives you an idea that if you stick to this plan and you do about a, I was. On this thing, it, should have, it said I should do about 116 watts on the bike. I should finish in around 6 hours and 23 minutes. 
So given all this data, it's like, okay, a six hour 30 bike split should be reasonable. So that was the plan. Running, um, I that was my strength, and so I figured I should do around four hours and 45 minutes. My half, my marathon last earlier this year was 4.15, so I figured around that plus more time because I'm going to be biking. So um, I knew also my heart rate um, to, for the run should be around 145 to 150, and that's kind of what the plan was when I run, look at my heart rate and make sure I'm within range and I'm not blowing up because I'm running too hard. That's a great that was plan. our run. With, I did this with Ernesto. Um, this was one of the harder runs we've done, 3,800 feet of climbing over 18 miles and three hours and seven minutes. Um, so this was our last tape run before we started tapering down two weeks ago. So if you ever want to run with Ernesto and I, let us know. We'd be glad to take you there. So this is the projected plan, 13 hours, and at the end of the day, I finished around 13 hours, 50 minutes. Um, I thought everything would be easy, but it really wasn't. And I'm going to talk about actual race day stuff. Um, but before that, here's some photos of the weekend. We stayed in a place, not in a hotel, which I recommend, on Airbnb. Um, the day before, I wanted to make t-shirts. I had that idea up there that I sent to my brother, and he said, screw that. So we actually came up with a much better design. Um, so I may be good at um, making charts and stuff, but definitely not graphics. So I've learned my lesson. Um, there's my mom trying to see if she could ride my bike, and this is a view from um, where we were staying. So it was a nice, uh, very nice weekend. Um, this is some pictures of us, um, me and Ernesto, at the actual place. Um, yeah, that wasn't real. It was just at the thing, so I, maybe next year I'll take that time. Um, and we had dinner. It was nice to see Ernesto's family and my family together. Um, and so the, the number one thing that I had to drive my head is is what I read on the day before. And I'm going to read, the difference between a good swim and a bad swim is only about 2.4 minutes. The difference between an easy bike and a hard bike is about 10 to 15 minutes. The difference between a good and bad run could be measured in hours. In my experience, your chances of dramatically slowing down can happen in the last eight to six to eight miles of the run. So therefore, focus all your energies on focus all day is on creating conditions for success in the final six to eight miles of the run, not putting on a sexy bike split. And this is a this is a great quote that I got to see literally is the run course is littered with people of walking bodies with athletes who put great bike splits. And that's what happened. I got to the run, and everyone was walking. And I'm like, I don't get it. Why are you guys all walking? And I, was, I felt fine. And it's because, yes, I think there was a lot of headwind, and people got excited, or they got worried, so they got bike, They started biking really hard, and they learned the hard way. So if you just, this is, what's nice about this sport is if you just plan smart and you execute, you, you could do well versus a lot of other sports where you just like work really, really hard and just do it. You know, it's a lot, it's a lot more technical. It's a lot of strategy. And they say that like, a lot of the people who do well in triathletes are your engineers or a lot more analytical. So for you guys that need a new sport to try, I, I highly recommend it. So a little bit of race, a little bit of race day stuff. Um, swimming. I spent an extra 30 minutes. The cutoff is two hours and 20 minutes. Thankfully, I didn't get cut off. This is my map, uh, my GPS watch. That is what the GPS watch said I did. Which, honestly, that seems about right, given there was a time where I hit my head on a kayak because I was going off course. Um, this said I did about 41, about 5,200 meters. So I swam a good extra thousand meters. I don't know if that's the GPS or me. I bet I think this is both, but. I was surprised how it took me an extra half an hour, given I thought I was going on faster, but I'm glad I didn't get cut off. I got stressed towards the end because I wasn't sure if I was going to make it, but thankfully I did. Which by the road? Huh? I don't know. I don't know. It <laughs> could be the GPS. <laughs> yeah, yes. it, it's really important, too, to study the course because I had no idea after I crossed this bridge how much more I had left. I just knew it was an out and back course. So if I would have known, okay, that bridge means this much longer. I could have planned my pacing better. But, so study the course when you do a race. Um, biking. Um, so I ended up doing around 102 watts um, versus my plan of like 115. And it's really because once I started getting on the course, I knew, man, this winds, the winds were pretty crazy. Not what I was expecting. And so I just really took it easier on the bike than I even was planning on it. And it was nice because there's three loops on the bike. The third lap, 
um, it was when I felt still pretty good, and that's when you could start seeing people drop off and start going up the hill at like five miles an hour. And you can imagine if they're struggling on lap three, they're pretty screwed for the run. And so who knows what happened during the run when they got to the run. So I was way over my, my projected time of um, six hours and 30 minutes, but I'm glad I didn't push myself because, again, I had a pretty good run pace. Um, so I ran a 4.30, which is about a 10.17 um, mile pace, which is a lot better um, than what I even projected. Um, and it's just because I probably took it a little too easy on the bike because um, you don't want to take it too easy because then you lose time. So um, I think that's what I ended up, ended up happening, but that's okay. It was nice, like, when I got off the bike and I started running, I'm like, wow, my legs feel good. I was running at, like, eight-minute pace, and I'm like, I got to slow down. So I had to force myself to slow down to, like, a 9, 9, 30 pace, and I was able to keep that up. Then I know, of course, even though I was okay, I still got a little tired. By mile 22 and it's dark, you're just like, this is stupid. Why do I do this? So I started, like, I started walk for about a minute. And then I said, okay, I can't do this anymore. I think it's around here where I saw Ernesto. Um, <laughs> and I'm like, no, it's not impossible. Maybe, because I haven't seen him all run. So I thought, maybe I could catch him. But then I started picking up the pace a little. But I said, you know, this is crazy. And if I, I'm sure he's going to do the same thing. So I kind of still pushed myself a lot more. But, it, you know, I knew. I, I did the math in my head. It, it's okay if he gets me this time. I'll get him next time. So, um, so still, I was, uh, <laughs> so I still had um, a pretty good finish at the end. I felt fine. I was tired, you know. And so overall, I I think it's pretty good. Given there's about 3,200 people that signed up, I came in 1379. So it's still above average um, for and you know for a first race, you can't complain. Um, yeah, at 3,200, my swim rank was like 2,500. Um, my run rank was 22,000. My bike rank was 2,000, but my run rank was 1379. Um, or, no, my. Anyway, oh, this is the overall rank. Anyway, um, so I'm very happy for, a, for this, this first time, um, given all these numbers. And again, a lot of people didn't even finish on this board where I actually talked to a lot of random strangers about this. A lot of people said, they didn't finish because of the biking was just too crazy. They weren't prepared for that. So just to finish one of these things, you could imagine, is a pretty cool thing. And to do it with two hours um, or three, um, over three hours spare, to spare is good. It's a 17-hour cutoff, and they, you know, you don't get a finish time if you don't cross in time. So um, thankfully, it didn't come down to me sprinting at the end to get um, to the end. Uh, so for next year, um, I'm already signed up for next year. They make you sign up before you race which is very smart of them, because I think if I would have registered the day after, I would have been like, ah, I don't know if I want to do this. So yeah, focus on the bike. I got in the water very late. I probably got in the water like at 7 o'clock. The gun went off at 7.05. So I had to swim, and I didn't have a chance to cool down and then start um, swimming. So I should have gone in the water earlier. Um, I took it easy, and I peed in the stalls in the bike. You know, when you, there's eight stations, and you, you, there's these um, porta potties that most people pee in. I had to do that four times, and if you do the math every time you do that, that costs you, what, three minutes each? So next time, just don't do that. That's, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, you, you just go on the bike, and then you get the water bottle while you're, you're doing your aid station, and <laughs> fine. So I, I ended up, so yeah, that, that's that's something that I, I, I should have. Something you could not share. Yeah, uh, and I was thinking, like, what am I really going to do next time? And so, and then the finish line, yeah, I got really excited about finishing, and so I kind of just like sprinted through it. When why need why do I need to sprint through it when I could enjoy it and be excited about the billion people watching? So I could have just taken my time, done it, done it handstand. I know, I know, I know. So, I'm pretty sure I beat him. So anything was good, I sprinted and had him pass me when I was going slow. So uh, those are little things, I mean, but all, other than that, these are small things to worry about, um, given all the stuff that could have gone wrong. You know, there was an ambulance on the bike course because someone probably crashed. A lot of people with flat tires. A lot of people got cut off at the swim because they didn't finish, so they just had to go home afterwards. I mean, long list of people who had issues, so just to finish again is a big deal, and I'm very thankful for that. Uh, so I think... 
to summarize all this, I think what really came down to, I think, it, for, for me to get to where I am today, I think just really meant having the right people around me. So, I mean, Ernesto is the guy who really told me to get the, to, he, he told me to sign up for this, and he's the one who I go swimming with every Friday. So, I think if you want to, you don't have to do an Ironman, but if you want to do something like this, just find people that want to do this and do it with them. You know, if you want to do something with me, I'd be glad to sign up with, sign up for a race with you. And so I really like this quote at the bottom, because I think who you spend your time with um, makes a big difference in um, getting to do these sort of things or any other things in life. Um, questions? Any questions? Does it have to have a presentation? Yes, it does. You always get a little time. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, questions, anything? That's cool. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Yeah. so much. The first time that, uh, that we signed up for a triathlon, we went out to the ocean. And I, that was a learning experience for me because, um, you know, the ocean is a very powerful force, right? When you're out in this water,